Welcome everyone to Haven Fellowship. Blessed Sunday to you. Hamare liye thoda weird hai because for us it's Wednesday <laughs> and we're recording this and we're going to go out of station so this will come on Sunday but blessed Sunday to you. Aap kaun hai? Noel. Aur aap kaun hai? Kitsi. Aur main Vihan hu. Mera Yohan hai. Mera Yohan hai. Aur hamara family idhar baitha hai. और हम प्रार्थना करेंगे मेरे हिंदी अच्छे नहीं है माफ कर दीजिए लेकिन ऐसा टंग्स जैसा बात हो रहा है अभी थैंक यू ऑलमेटी गॉड फॉर दिस न्यू मंथ यू हैव ब्लेस्ड अस विथ थैंक यू फॉर ऑल योर फेथफुलनेस यू carried us through the month showing your greatness showing your power working beautifully in our midst thank you for all your goodness and kindnesses your mercies they are new every morning great is your faithfulness and today as we gather to worship you may we see you in all your glory and splendor and beauty and behold your magnificence your greatness your power right in our midst working and we bow to you in worship expressing our gratitude from the depth of our hearts and as we meditate on your word today we want to remind ourselves of our first love to you the the moment we met with you God who embraced us when we had the first encounter face to face with God move in our midst like never before touch our lives speak to us heal us thank you in Jesus precious name we pray amen amen this is amazing grace when we first came to the lord this was the anthem of our love na yes. let it continue to be the anthem of our love his amazing grace lyrics and description please join with us sing dance i heard some play along with us it is so fun let's sing the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king of all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bend my cross
Great are you, Lord. You are life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the dark.
you are the light you bring light lord and you give us hope and you restore every broken heart lord thank you lord that as we just sang this song with every breath that we have taken lord to sing the song it's your breath in our lungs lord thank you lord so that's why we worship you lord because we are not breathing on our own lord it's your breath lord in us, Lord. We are so blessed with that, Lord. Thank you. I pray that you will bless your servant as she comes and speaks, Lord, and uh, gives us your word to us, Lord. May we just grasp it, Lord, and just, just bask in it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. It is life. Your word is life. Bless the congregation as they watch, Lord. May you just be with each one of them, Lord. May they feel your presence, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on this beautiful Sunday. Um, yes, we are doing it on Wednesday, but I'm thinking it's Sunday. So thank you for joining us today. And as we, um, yeah, if you are led to give offerings to the Lord, the, the details are in the description below. <laughs> Sorry, Lord, give me your breath. <laughs> and um, as we go into the service, let's just focus on what God has to say for us, say to us today. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you, Kitsy. Thank you. Thank you, family. Wow. First love. So many of us have asked this question. How can I go back to my first love? I miss that first love that I had for God. I'm talking about God, okay? I'm talking about God. If we had any other thing come to our mind when we said first love, we need help. <laughs> because he loved us first. Who? God. God loved us first. And we need to... If we are not in that first love already, we need to go back. So today I want to share mostly my own experience this uh, past week and share the kind of conversations that I've had with the Lord. So this week I was um, doing everything that we've been talking about. We don't just preach here. God makes sure we practice what we preach. So last week was about returning to God and I took seriously what God said through my own mouth and went to God and he was saying, come to me every day and you need healing for this, 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 this as going. And we've been talking about justice and mercy. We've been talking about responding to God's love. So I've been putting all this into practice. And um, this week we read in Corinthians that Paul said something very interesting. He said, I don't judge myself. And that really hit me hard because I judge myself a lot. Now, 
not to, not for it to be confused with examining ourselves and seeing where we are in faith. We have to do that. The Bible says to do that. But it hit me that I constantly criticize myself more than seeing the progress that was made. So I was asking God, okay, you judge me. Paul was saying, God judges me. So I said, okay, God, you judge me. You're judging me today. If you're giving me a report card, what's it going to look like? And he gave me all the best things first. You know, he was like, you've grown so much in this area, this area, this area. And I was allowing myself to take it in. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like puffing, 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 puffing here. Wow, I didn't realize I've grown so much. Compared to how you are, I am very, very, very small and nothing. But compared to how I was, definitely I have grown so much in the past, say, 10 years or so. And... Then he said, nevertheless, <laughs> I have this against you. You have left your first love. Revelations talks about it. So he was saying the same thing to me. If you think, if anybody here thinks it's an old book, I don't think people here think that, but there may be one or two. This is an old book. Maybe you're here because you have to be here and think, this, this was written 2,000 years ago, what can it say to me now? But he has said the exact same words to me now in 2024. He says, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And this cut me to the throat because I'm like married to Jesus and everything. You know, if, like, if I don't have the first love, then what do I have? And he says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. So this is like, this is not like, um, you can, if you want to enjoy life more, then come back to your first love. This is like, if you don't do it, <laughs> you will die. I will remove your place. I will remove your name from the book of life. I will... And don't start rebuking me right now. I'm talking about the words of Jesus. These are the words of Jesus. If you don't come back to your first love, if you have fallen, he's going to blot our name from the book of life. So I was like, Lord, I'm doing the best I can do. I've given everything to you. I've given my life. I've put my career into your hands. I'm going by you step by step, day by day. And I'm really doing the best I can. How do you make your heart love? when it's not the same. I know I've changed. I was asking God, how do I put myself there? I know what you're asking. And uh, uh, go with me, if you're here, kind of been years into Christianity, or maybe it's even days into Christianity, and that first love has faded a bit. Go with me to that first love. I remember my first love. It was so thrilling. It was exciting. I was pouring into the word of God. It was during my 40-day fast. So I was reading this whole book for the first time. And I think um, some of us are reading the Bible for the first time right now. And it was just joy after joy after joy after joy. And I'm being thrilled. It's like heaven on earth. I'm getting up thinking about God. I go to bed thinking about God. And in between, I'm thinking about God. And I was like, God... I know what you're asking right now. I know you want me to go back to that. But how do I pull my spirit and heart there when it's not? The solution is we already read it. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen from and do the first works. So God asked me, what did you do at that time that you're not doing now? Say, so, okay, I was reading more. I was praying more. Okay, okay, I'm doing those things now also. Okay, I was, um, I was writing down your words. I'm doing that now also. Then he reminded me of one of the things. One more thing I, I used to do, which I still do. I was growing in the spirit. I was growing in character. This I'm doing now also. But God reminded me of one thing that I am not doing now. And it was a very pure thing. Another difficult thing that has uh, been an obstacle for me is Everything that I was doing at that time when I was 17 years old was with a slight motive. <laughs> Can you guess what the motive was? If I seek the Lord, this is very embarrassing, if I seek the Lord first 
and all these things shall be added to me so i'm going to oh if that's what it takes for all these things shall be added to me i seek the lord now in the past 10 years god has exposed that motive and he has shut it down he has destroyed it he has exposed it he has shamed it he has he has also shown me he's also taken me to the top of the mountain and shown me that it's not worth going after that motive any blessing that you can think of in this life is not worth your life the blessing itself is not worth our life sacrifice it falls short say i want um 10 say i want 10 million views okay i reached it it's whatever because when you reach 10 million views you are seeing the people who have 10 million subscribers with 10 billion views and then you're like oh you know so it's it's not okay say i want a grammy now i've seen what the grammys stand for and it's really not what i stand for you know so like that god has broken down say we wanted money for our debts and god gave the money for our debts but so what so what it's not worth the life's heart's love you know the the money comes for the debt then there's a new need there's a new need there's a new need oh now my debt is cleared now i want this so all those and these shall be added to you all those were exposed as only extra things only maybe supplementary things but not the crucial core things and so now now that i've understood that my initial drive was fueled by motives that were not okay and now those motives have been pulled out motives for fame motives for maybe money motives for being provided for motives for even for joy <laughs> but going after joy instead of going after god all those things have been pulled out now i ask god now how do i do this because that means even my first love was a bit crooked you know now how do i go but i really don't understand how to go about this so he said thank god that it's been exposed thank god it's been pulled out now you can do it from a pure way and then he showed me one pure thing i used to do is like there was one thing you used to do that was not online that was not in front of anybody and that had no agenda i was like what 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 it's like you used to sing to me and just to me not as a group not as a church not on a video uh, not for recording just to me and used to do it every day and there was like a whole year when i was i think it was right after college 2015 2016 just me and god because he was just saying worship me when i was asking what career do i take he was just saying worship me i was like okay if i'm going to worship as a career i'm going to worship as a career and i would just worship the lord and i got used to the beautiful intimacy of that for a long time so 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 i took out my guitar and i was like um i've been writing a lot of songs let's say i've written 100 songs in the past year you all haven't heard it but god has heard it but i'm doing it to write a song you know what i'm saying i'm doing it to write a song i'm doing it for the next recording and i was like let me just let me just sing so i revisited one of the songs i wrote this month today is the 1st of september is awesome but the day we're recording it is still august so this month i wrote this song and i visited it and this is how it is oh i should give you a little back backdrop every bible reading that we have every bible reading portion that we have it's not just what the portions it's even before but i've noticed it this year i read and i'm so confronted by the majesty of god that is revealed whether it's the old testament or new testament the mercy the grace the holiness of god whether it's a prophecy whether it's to do with the temple definitions or whether it's to do with the book of the letters to the churches in corinthians for example i finish reading and i go and i fall face down because 
I meet God through the Word. The Word in the beginning was with God and the Word was God. And I keep meeting Him through the Word. Which is why we say, read your Bible every day. You are, you are meeting, you are kind of dating God, if I can say without being blasphemous. In that you are meeting God one-on-one, quality time. And so I fall on my face and I'm like, sometimes I'm just, like my mom says, just silent. Just like, you know, recalibrating my human self to God's holiness and the reality that he is. So it was on such a time, I was face down and I was saying these words that sounded like a song. So I started, like, I am am on my bed like this. And I lift just enough to record this alongside. And it went like this. I honor you, hallowed king. I honor you face down. Your glory falls so heavily on this little room. Behold the king, pure majesty, grace like a gold crown. In purple robes, mercy and hope flooding this room. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Praise the Father, Son. Okay, okay. Like you want me to do it? Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like finished with the starting. Okay. Okay, my sound person, Daddy. I honor you, hallowed king. I honor you face down. Your glory falls so heavily on this little room. Behold the king, pure majesty, grace like a gold crown. In purple robes, mercy and hope flooding this room. So I decided to describe what I was seeing in the spirit. I literally felt um, the purple robes of God, like like literally my hands were at his feet. And I was seeing purple robes with jewels on it. And it's very manly. I don't know how to describe it. We don't have that dressing today with, with men, but it was like a king's robes, you know? And... Uh, the room was so thick with his glory, his mercy, his hope, and he was crowned with grace. So I try to describe that. I leave it in the description, these words. And on this day, I was revisiting this song. So I had finished the song and gone about my day. This was a few days later. I'm revisiting the phone recording. It was a bad quality and everything, but it struck me so hard. And then I put uh, the guitar to it, and I was singing it, and then I started singing it, and then I was singing it. And normally I can't play the guitar more than like 10 minutes, which is partly why our worship session is just kind of 10 minutes. I was playing and playing and singing and singing. I came out, I had to have breakfast. I'm singing this song while I'm having my breakfast. Um, And then 
we had to go about our day. I went about my day. I'm singing. I'm almost like this. I'm almost walking around like this, you know, because the glory of God was was falling, and I'm aware of it. I'm sure it's always falling around, but I was aware of the glory of God. I went for my bath, and my dad comes and he's he he knocks on the door and he's like, "Are you bathing?" I'm like, "Yes." He's like, "Mom just fell down," and Im- immediately my mind started panicking like <gasps> but then my spirit took over and was like excuse me you were worshiping god just now and the glory and the greatness of god is so much bigger than what you just heard which is an earthly thing that you heard so i'm like okay god yes that's right what do i do what should i do as my mom's daughter you know i care for my mom what should i do he said pray for her so peace took over again i'm praying for her lord help her help her and i'm getting peace in my spirit and before i can even leave the bathroom and i'm thinking just just wipe up and just leave you know because i want to know what's going on before i can even do that in 2 minutes dad comes and she's fine don't worry about it i'm like okay but i'm coming anyways i go she's still on the floor it's been 5 6 minutes since my dad first came she's still on the floor dad's with her putting ice her arm her shoulder which you have seen in a cast in the past few weeks if you've been watching was already uh, having frozen shoulder she had just had a very painful physiotherapy the previous day she has fallen on that arm and then she's fallen on this arm and then she's fallen on her knees and then she's fallen on her jaw so it's kind of red everywhere but i see another miracle she is so full of joy <laughs> and she's telling us nothing bad happened like this whole thing is red and she has some cuts and i can't bear i'm sure any child can't bear when their mother gets hurt she has some cuts and it's, it's red over here nothing bad happened can you speak to us about that like if you're okay she's she's so it's the day after now and she's not really okay but i'm just asking if she can can you speak about it if you can otherwise okay like what was going on in that moment why did you say that nothing bad happened and why was there joy on your face i i don't know how to describe uh, uh what happened actually yeah there's about some bruising and all of that but if you know jesus i think he's closest to those in their weakest and um it's as if i fell but i did not fall it's as if i was hit but and there was an absence of contact with a pain with mm. pain and i'm seeing bruising and cuts and scratches and this you all were worshiping god mm. you all were praising god uh, and i think we all knew nothing you know <laughs> there's no death injury Mm-mm. but it was what the experience to see what god can do and it was like this is his language this is his uh, his way of streaming to us mm-hmm. um this is his teaching me that um how do i put this this is our contact with the invisible mm-hmm. when suddenly with a snap you don't feel pain suddenly with a snap uh all self pity mm. you know all of that we mm. were having guests in an hour mm. there was things to do and we were happy and uh, suddenly you're mournful but mourning turned to rejoicing and not just that nothing bad happened mm. but rejoicing in his presence which was very thick in that threshold between our kitchen and the balcony yeah. and that sharp kadappa slab between that caused some bruising mm. um i hit my jaw i felt my neck go and i was thinking go meaning there was a little um thing in the neck <laughs> yeah joke. um but the thing that you are asking about is i i felt a bubble a, a, almost wanted to laugh out loud mm. and um when when all you all were getting ice and all six seven places um the lord was saying stand up mm-hmm. it was so clear re stand up walk about quickly walk about and it took a while to get up you saw 
big struggle to get up but walking about i felt suddenly straighter mm-hmm. than i've been the past few years oh it's like the old fashioned bone setter they give you one knock oh and you maybe the vertebra needed some realigning but i'll always uh, think of what happened yesterday as any contact with something that could be troublesome is also if you're with god he will realign you mm-hmm. and something happened deep in my spirit that he cares so deeply he cares so deeply for a tiny little slip like that i mean uh, great better people have had worse knocks this is nothing but i'm standing taller standing straighter and experience that giving thanks and saying thank you and worshiping god in the worst of situation releases uh what we call jotl j o t l in our home the joy of the lord and this is very hard to describe but we just are experiencing that at home and i'm thinking all the things that could have gone wrong i mean in retrospect thinking later and we have one more day to just worship him without any applause claps nothing just worship him for who he is he is living in the supernatural and these encounters with little uh, bruising and all of that is our moment with the supernatural when he imparts joy i do not know if that describes it enough that's such a blessing to us wasn't it so relieving to us dad that she was you know far from crying she was happy she was joyful she was telling us not to worry like and then we were praying for her her wounds because there there were wounds and she's already going through pain in her shoulder and that's the shoulder that is looking red right now so you're praying and what did you see dad when we were praying he saw something in front of his eyes yeah maybe a minute before you know i had seen uh, you know bruises uh, and you know uh, deep scratch and uh, all those um, but in a in a moment it is all like you know disappearing yeah and um, a little later it further subdued it like you know almost what nothing happened <laughs> wow. you know wow yeah amazing praise god so um uh, of course we took to our haven group our whatsapp group and we're like pray for mom because <laughs> because she has these hurts and she's already been going through pain and like we could really use that prayer support and i thank all our haven i too been praying for mom she is being healed supernaturally um but later i was like lord i went for bath one minute and <laughs> this happened in that one minute and he said excuse me please continue worshiping me continue your worship don't you see you had such a supernatural morning just because something happened in the natural it doesn't take away what's going on in the supernatural you know we christians have to allow the supernatural to override the natural even on this earth So I was like okay I'll continue worshiping the Lord because I know that is true and it's truth and it's his due even in this moment like my mom said so I'm worshiping the Lord and as I worship the Lord with that song which I sang he shows me something he shows me a slow mo this is such a dramatic kind of movie um and you may believe it or not but he showed me this mom's falling down and as she is falling down there are like three four angels who catch her hands and her neck and her side and her legs these are all the places she fell and she told us that because like she felt the impact in her neck and that's very very dangerous so she knew that the fact that nothing bad happened is because god saved her and god is showing me the spiritual uh, realm at this moment that they were holding her as she fell and that's why nothing bad happened Let me also tell you last year she had a fall I think a lesser fall on the side of the road okay and such it caused such damage 
and we've heard so many stories so many people they fall they fall in their home something so like fractures everything so this was quite a nasty fall and nothing bad happened glory to god he showed me these angels catch her even though she's she has fallen she's got these things to show for it but they have taken the brunt of it and also that um uh, he showed me like this evil thing push her and then she falls and then these angels come these angels are holding her as she's falling they turn to the evil and they literally do <sighs> like i like how dare you oh you're like you're like ah and that was so comforting to me <laughs> Now this is the way God speaks to me, right? I'm not going to write this in the Bible or anything. I'm not going to say this is how he's going to show you and if you don't see these kind of things and that's something wrong with you. No, no, this is how he speaks to me. Um Kitsy and I kind of like his his is we like seeing cats do that. It's kind of it's something like well, oh, look at that. So I don't know if that's why God showed me that way that the angels are doing that to the evil but it was comforting. And then God said, "See the joy it's giving you, see the comfort it's giving you. Share it with your mom." So I shared it with her. <laughs> Lion of Judah. I shared it with her because what it also spoke to me is we think that oh God did this and he did it to show something, but actually God has saved her from something evil did and he, and guess what he doesn't like what the evil is doing that was comforting to me it's not like just because God allows evil it doesn't mean he likes what's going on it doesn't mean he likes the the rule of satan over the earth it doesn't mean he likes the bondages he puts it doesn't mean he likes the way he tortures people he doesn't so that's that was what really helped me i told it to mom she I I mean she has also known that in her spirit but she today she told me that she was going on thinking of that scene in her mind and it was like oh the angels are here angels are around praise god so um all this happened and then as she said guests we had guests over and, and she was hosting and god helped her through that all this while we are to worship the lord through the regular day and through the things that happen and the accidents that can happen and the people that we meet we have to keep worshiping the lord so what i'm saying is the thing that god told me to do which i used to do in that first love sing just him and me i want to ask you today what did you do when you had your first love with jesus was there a special something you did or maybe you wouldn't think it's special but it was special to him it was special to god i want us to just think for a second go back to that place of when you had that first love you know close your eyes if you need to what did i do at that time like what was my day like was it a different attitude was i was i spending quiet time a little differently was i reading in a different way was i praying in a different way whatever that was Jesus says do what you used to do in that time. Was I spending more time with God? Was I being kinder to people? Was I being more forgiving? Was I being more gracious with others? Whatever it was, allow yourself without fear to go there and tell yourself, let me do that again. And let me make a commitment to keep doing it. Because God doesn't want it to be a first love and now you have a second love, a third love. He wants you to remain in his love. Jesus said, "I have loved you the way my father has loved me. I have given my life for you. Now remain in my love." All we have to do here is be loved. <laughs> Allow God to love us like he does. And we have to remain in that love. When we remain in that love, we remain in our first love. the things we do like for me it was singing a song for me that's the gift god has given me and when i use that to glorify him that's one of the purest forms of our connection of my connection with him especially and he communicates with me through songs as well and many other ways but i love when he communicates with me through songs it hits different 
what's your gift have you given it to god and have you used it to glorify him it could be a technical gift it could be admin it could be commerce it could be um, engineering have you used it to glorify god have you applied it in your quiet time i don't know how you would but have you thought about that have you thought how can i give god a gift through my gift like cain and abel they gave god a gift through their gift their gift was agriculture and they gave it back to god and god judged the way they gave it how they gave it with what heart did they give it have you thought about that would you try it out did you used to do something before that you don't now can we do it again last week we had such amazing testimonies and resolutions from so many of you in the live chat and in the comments later i read it out to you and i read uh, even the comments later people were saying like maybe i should get it some beautiful resolutions that they're going to spend more time with god they're going to read their bible more they're not going to allow things to distract them they're going to come to god first and and not go to other things they're not going to go on their phone first and then to god but god first in a sense we're talking about the same thing today returning to that first love doing what you used to do because that it wasn't about the deed it was the um the deed was showing the state of heart you know and now when your state of heart has changed the way you can go back is to do what your heart used to show for me it worked i've returned to my first love because i just started singing to god one on one again and look i was tired i've been tired and it takes some energy to play the guitar and to sing i heard that singing is one of the quickest ways to burn calories play the guitar is another level playing the guitar and singing so work out people ask why so skinny now you know <laughs> i'm just kidding but maybe not so yeah um i was tired but when you do something out of love you don't feel the calories <laughs> not thinking one calorie two calorie you're not thinking you you just because you love it you will spend your energy you will spend your time you will invest whatever you have to invest you will sacrifice what you need to sacrifice because you love it how many people stay up late in the night on their phone because they just love what they're watching their body loves it their eyes love it their mind loves it so you don't care the time is going tomorrow you have to wake up early in the morning it's 3 a.m it's okay it's okay i need this how much you think we can give god how much more and he'll return it he'll he'll bless you but don't go to god for the blessing like i did don't seek him for the blessing seek him for what then seek him for him you'll be going back to your first love so write in the chat what what, what did you do before when you had your first love and are you going to do that again and are you going to make a commitment to keep that up to do that every day to be in that lifestyle of first love to to remain in a honeymoon if i can say so with the lord it doesn't have to end it doesn't have to stop and get into real life no you can have real life in that first love because he didn't we wouldn't want god to change right we wouldn't want god to love us in a special way when we first come and then later is like chuck you <laughs> we want god to remain in the first love why not we also remain in that first love so right in the live chat are you going to do what you used to do because jesus is saying look there's there's no choice if you want to be with me it needs to be first love or nothing at all cuz if you don't come there i'm going to remove your place from I'm going to remove your lamp stand from its place so don't lose your place with the Lord. Now he's given you grace. Many people take that grace for granted. No till now he gave me grace. No he understands he knows my heart. I'm just a human being. I can't do all that what I used to do. I used to have time before. 
that time was covid time i had time now i'm working i can't do all that now um revelation 3 said i gave her time to repent and she didn't there's a time he gives each of us and there's an end to that time you don't know if the end of that time is right now because now you know that he needs you if you want to need him to go to heaven i'm not threatening you but i'm threatening you <laughs> he needs you to come back to that first love it's it's not an option here if you want you want jesus this is the necessity that we have our first love so those who want jesus those who want their lamp stands to remain before the throne of god who want our name to be remaining in the book of life you may quote some verses at me i feel some people i feeling i'm feeling the thoughts against me maybe by the spirit of god saying once he says i will never leave you nor forsake you he cannot do that please read the book of revelations then you come to me please read revelations 2 2 to 5 and read the whole chapter it's great then you ask god can say i will never leave you nor forsake you and he can say this at the same time it's a relationship we can't take a friendship for granted we can't treat our friend like second when he's treating us as the apple of his eye we can't treat him anywhere anywhere else so i'm waiting i can't see your live chat but i am waiting for you to type it in because i am not sensing that you are i'm sensing that only some have and there are many who are not so i am waiting for you to type it in the live chat what are you going to return to when you type it in the live chat others are also encouraged to write as well type it in the comments later others are also encouraged to oh okay i have some idea now what i can also do to go back to the lord and maybe you're not a typer and that's okay but tell yourself make a commitment with yourself and god make a pact oh i'm so sorry lord i'm going to come back to what i used to do what was that pure form of worship that you had that you can come back to you will be blessed um mainly because um don't we love being in the first love there's nothing like the first love it's a beautiful feeling for our own benefit also let's take this seriously and god also we can bless god by our first love both ways will be blessed so i've given you all my convincings god mom has written something what is this response why don't you read it shin okay she wrote this like now she wrote this right now you stream tears of beauty this is called first love you stream tears of beauty you overriding my natural with your supernaturally supernaturality i'm falling falling upwards in your skies no longer gravity bound holding on to who held me this far i'm turn turn turning to the way we were in the beginning the king of kings unchanging streaming tears of holy beauty overriding my natural with your supernaturality by necessity turn turn returning me to first love is there a necessity some of you that's incredible mom has used her gift to worship the lord by writing this poem if i can call it a poem what's your gift have you did you used to use it to worship the lord can you use it that's one idea for this but there could be so many other ways that we return to our first love thank you for sharing what you have in the live chat by faith i'm saying do you all have anything to say are you all getting any like ideas of what you can do to return to first love anything no you no you no you <laughs> all right let's pray let's pray father i bring to you everything that we are returning to 
thank you for being so honest and open with us to tell us that there is something against those of us who have left our first love. And if we're honest, it may be many of us. Thank you for reminding us from where we have fallen. Thank you for giving us a spirit of repentance. I feel the spirit of repentance in our midst. And if not, I pray you will give us the spirit of repentance. Thank you for those who are saying that they will return to the things they used to do when they first loved you. The outpourings of our heart, full of love for you. We return, O oh Lord. I return to singing just you and me. Very regularly, every day, singing just to you. Just you and me. Not for recordings, not for anything. Just you and me. I return to that. Whether I'm tired or not, I want to do this every day, Lord. And I will show it to you through my actions. And I pray for each one who is saying um, similar things in their own ways, their own personalities, their own gifts, their own schedules. Thank you for moving them to do so, Lord. Thank you last week how you moved people to make resolutions with you. And I pray that we've been able to do that, which was also a way of turning back to our first love. And I pray today, you take it further, you cement it, you cement that first love in us, that we click back into that state of heart where we are full of excited, almost giddy love for you, overwhelmed and in awe of your mercy and grace. Bless us, Lord. We don't want you to remove our lampstand from its place. <laughs> but we're not doing this out of fear and because of that threat of it, but that you're showing us the necessity and the urgency. So we thank you for that. Instead of when we come to you face to face and then you tell us, we thank you for telling us now that we can turn, we can repent. We're sorry, Lord. You deserve that love. Of course you deserve the first love. Of course. We love you, God. Let's tell him, we love you, God. We love you. And let's prove it. In Jesus' precious name, we, we also break every bondage that stops us from this. Heal the hurts that have come in the way. Remove the obstacles that have come in the way. In Jesus' name. Remove the lies of Satan. We rebuke the lies of Satan that has hurt our mind and our spirit against the Lord. We rebuke you and your lies, Satan. In Jesus' name. O Lord, fill us, Romans 5.5 5 says, your spirit has poured your love in our hearts right now as we come to you. Pour your love in our hearts that we would also from that love give back the love you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive the benediction. The amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the extravagant, incredible, overwhelming love of God the Father and the intimate friendship, association and participation and company and fellowship of the Lord Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Blessed Sunday, blessed new month. God bless you all.